Welcome to the Unicorn Connector Show, where we talk about relationships, revenue, and referrals. We'll dig into opportunities for people to generate revenue by making referrals from the relationships they establish. We'll also cover tips to grow your network, leverage it, and get paid residual income for life. Today, we have a special episode with Christina Daves, where we will focus on building relationships to generate publicity to grow your business. Christina is a PR strategist, best-selling author, and a Unicorn Solutions partner who has generated over $100 million in sales with her clients through free publicity. She is the author of PR for Anyone, which gives you over 100 affordable ways to easily create buzz for your business and the DIY guide to free publicity. She has appeared in over a thousand local and national media outlets, and we are thrilled to have Christina join us today to share her insights on relationship building, being a connector, and how to leverage free publicity for your business. Welcome, Christina. I'm excited to have you here. Please go ahead and say hello. I know, we're gonna have so much fun. This is gonna be awesome. Yeah. All right, so uh, before we get started, I just wanted to mention for everybody who's watching, uh, go ahead, put a unicorn emoji in the chat and let us know where you're watching from. If you have any questions for Christina as we go along, please ask in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. So Christina, I know you were just talking about how you've been on so many of these, not exactly a new platform for you. Um, I would love to know a little bit how you got started. Can you tell us a bit about your journey in creating buzz for your own business and how you got started with generating your own publicity? It was very accidental. Uh, I actually owned a retail store and we accidentally got some publicity through that, but it, PR was never in my mind. Like I kind of, I figured out that, you know, through PR, you get to lots of people and lots of people know about you. You can do more business, but I never really made it a conscious effort. And then I sold the store and I retired. All the entrepreneurs out there know there's no such thing as us retiring. Uh, and I had this fluke accident and I broke my foot and the doctor put me in one of those big, ugly medical boots and we were headed to new york city so i'm on the train like googling medical boot fashions medical boot accessories and there was nothing on the market and i joke i think my husband saw the entrepreneurial light bulbs go off he's like oh here we go again what's she gonna do now uh but i got to new york and then you see everybody in a boot and i started asking women what if you could decorate it like fashionably not you know, blingy, but actually really nice, something nice and fashionable. And everybody was like, Oh, this sounds great. And I came back, I created a fashion line for it, launched it. And nobody knew I existed, because it had never existed before. So I had to figure out how to tell the world I'd hired a coach, and he stole a lot of money for me. Uh, so I was I had no money for advertising, nothing. And I literally went to the library and got really good at PR. I did like PR for dummies, but all these books. And I figured out a system 13 years ago um, that's pretty foolproof. I, I knock on wood whenever I say this, but nobody's ever called and said, Christina, I did everything you said and it didn't work. Instead, I get the, oh my gosh, Christina, I did this and it works. And it works over and over again. Because once you systematize it, you could be in the media and that's how I ended up in a thousand media outlets. Cause I just keep walking the walk and doing what I teach other people how to do. Awesome. That's, that's a really interesting story. I remember when you were telling me about this boot for the first time, first time I heard about it and I just thought it was so interesting. And, um, and you know, and you've appeared in like over a thousand local and national media outlets mm -hmm. Can you tell us about one of your favorite experiences or opportunities from those appearances? Well, I, the first one, and you'll hear this, and if, if you read my book or follow any of my stuff, you, you don't start in national media. You start on local media. That's just kind of the stepping stones, how it goes. But my first television appearance was the Steve Harvey show. And I was petrified. I had never spoken in public. I had never done this. I had never done anything. And I got this opportunity to be on the show and I was a wreck. So I called my friend who's a hypnotist. I was like, Ryan, you've got to hypnotize me. Like, I, I can't do this. He's like, Christina, you can do this. You'll be fine. 
but he gave me the best advice that I, I love to share with everybody who's just starting out. He said, Christina, nobody in that audience wants to see you fail. Everybody's there. The show was like a Shark Tank kind of show. So I was competing against five other inventors. And I remember I, I could barely breathe. I was so scared. And I looked in the audience and there was a woman in a red sweater and a twinkle in her eye. And she just smiled at me. And I'm like, I've got this. Like, I can do this. And I ended up winning uh, the top inventor competition. I won $20,000 when I was dead broke. We had mortgaged the house. I didn't know what else to do. And that was really the shot in the arm that that launched the company. And, you know, once you're on Steve Harvey, and then I was on three more times after that. And he's amazing. He's so fun and so funny that it yeah. was really, really good. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Steve Harvey is awesome. He's easily he's one of my awesome. favorite people on TV. Yeah. Just so great. That's a really cool story. Um, I'm curious. So, you know, you've been doing this for a while. What is it that you love the most about everything that you do? I love when I turn on my TV or I open a newspaper and I see one of my clients there. Uh, you know, I, and I work with people all across the country, but for me locally, you know, I'll get up on a Sunday morning and turn on the news and there's a client or a past client and I'll text them. I'll be like, Oh my gosh, you're on. They're like, Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you so much. Like you taught me how to do this. So that's the best. Or when they send me emails, I had another old client who's now a new client again, uh, who sent me the picture of her local news station at her house, you know, doing the thing she had, you know, the the microphone pack on and the camera person following her and she just had great pictures. So that I love that because I know what it does for their business. Yeah, that's amazing. So, and you've helped some of your clients generate over, you said a hundred million dollars in sales from free publicity, right? Yeah. So can you share a little bit more about that story or I don't know if, you know, there are certain things yeah. you can and can't talk about, but um, well, like how are you able to help them achieve that? Okay, my favorite story. Uh, so I had um, done a presentation and for a real estate company, and it was a brand new agent. He'd only had his license, I don't know, two or three weeks. And he was hungry. Like, normally I work with established people, but this guy was like, he was a go-getter. So we signed up to work together. He said, Christina, I'm going to pitch the Washington Post. I'm going to get in the Washington Post. And I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. Might not happen the first time. I'm very open and transparent with my clients. I said, but this is a good story. Let's see where it lands. So sure enough, he gets the story in the Washington Post real estate section front page. And he had come, he was a manager of a big box retail store. And his expertise was uh, Facebook ads, online advertising. And the whole article was about how to sell your house using Facebook ads. And this was several years ago when before people were really starting to do it, he was kind of cutting edge. So he gets this, it's right around the holidays. I'd had my class before Thanksgiving. He had three little girls. It's like, I'm not going to bother him over the holidays. So in January, I texted him and I was like, hey, what's the ROI on that article? He had gotten $5 million plus listings in six weeks. And as time went on, the first year he did 24 million, brand new agent. Second year, he doubled that. He's now one of the top teams in the uh, DC metro area. And I saw him like a couple of years later and I said, Dustin, why don't you get more media? Like this crushed your business. He's like, I don't need to. He goes, I still take that one article to every listing appointment. That's all I need to do. <laughs> Which is pretty that's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Um Okay, cool. And so how would you say that people who are connecting with others or, you know, in business, how, how would you approach connecting with people in business that is mutually beneficial for both parties? Because that article had to have seen some sort of benefit to putting him in there in the first place, right? Right. With, with anything, and let me tell you, if you connect with me today on LinkedIn, if you're watching this, don't sell me in an hour because I don't know you. It, I, and I know you know this. It's driving me nuts. So everything in life is relationship building. And you will do much better to provide value to somebody first before you ask them <laughs> to buy from you. Uh, we teach a lot about influencer marketing. And it's not Beyonce and The Rock and Taylor Swift. You know, who are those people in your industry that are 
further along and you have a more engaged following that you can provide a win-win scenario to. And, and the same thing when you pitch the media, this is not you selling you when you get on the television station. They're going to tell them to go to your website or Instagram or wherever you tell them to send people. But you have to provide value to an audience. You have to provide value when you connect with somebody. That's, you know, people are in it for themselves. And that's just the way the world works. What's in it for me? But if you come to me with a value driven proposition, and how it's a win win, and how we can do things together, that's not you just riding my coattails, because of all the work I've done over the last 13 years, you know, and I hope that makes sense. But I'll get on a soapbox about this for hours. So <laughs> know your value and know what value you can provide to another person or an audience before you pitch them or sell them anything. Absolutely. I'm done. Drop no, that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, that resonates with me in so many ways. And we, on this show, we've talked a lot about golden connections and there are these five keys to creating golden connections. And easily one of the most important keys is the value aspect of it, because if you can't provide value to the person who you identify as your golden connection, then it's not going to work out, right? There's mm -hmm. got to be this reciprocal part of the relationship. And so I think you just, you nailed it on the head. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's great. So we got a comment from Misty and she said that she knows her story is good. She just needs to get it out there. So I'm curious, you know, for business owners who are just getting started, looking to generate their own publicity, what are some tips or strategies that you would recommend somebody implement to get started? Well, and and Misty, first of all, thank you for watching. Um, I don't know your story per se, and, and I'm sure it's a great one. Um, the easiest way to get in the media, and again, because I don't know exactly what your story is, uh, is newsjacking. You know, what's happening in the news today? as horrible as it is, we had another school shooting yesterday. And one of my clients is a former SWAT commander, and he has been in the media 24 seven yesterday. And he just emailed me all day today. I don't want him in the media. Like I want him being in the media because he stopped things from happening. Yeah. Um, but but that's what's the media talking about? And how can you provide expertise right now? That's the easiest way. Um, again, I don't know the story. But Whoever your story resonates with, that's who you need to pitch to. If your story is resonating to people over 55, it's AARP. If your story resonates with 20-somethings, you know, go to a BuzzFeed. If you really have to know the demographic, you know, is it is it on a morning show on television? Is it more newsworthy that it's, you know, the afternoon or the evening? Some afternoon and evening news programs don't take guests. Like I'm in the DC area, we're hardcore news, hardcore government military. We only have a couple of morning shows. Not every station has it. Some have the 12 o'clock shows. You've got the four o'clock news and five, six, 11, forget it. They're not going to put guests on. So you have to do your homework to know a, who the demographic for that story is, you know, why you're a fit for that demographic and then put together a good pitch to send to them. That's the easiest way to get the yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and so you have you have this uh, three steps to PR success, right? Can you tell me a little bit? Of it? Would that be a good place for somebody to start or maybe your book? Yes. Yeah. So I call it my Get PR Famous Formula. Okay. Um, and yes, you can get it at three steps for PR success. The number three, not the book, but it's a guide. So all right. the stuff we're talking about is in there. And then my colleague, Cindy, does a bonus video for when you do get the television interview, how to give a really good interview. Um, but the three steps are being newsworthy, which the newsjacking I just talked about, uh, creating a great hook. You've got to hook your journalist in. If they don't open the email, it doesn't do you any good. Don't write, here's another story idea. Oh, that's, you got to get them, if they have 500 emails, why are they going to open yours? And don't use clickbait. I don't like that either. It's got to be legit to your story. And then the last step is finding the right journalist. Who's writing about business? Who's writing about real estate, finance, cooking, lifestyle, whatever your business is, who's writing or, or reporting about that? That's who you want to go to. Yeah, that makes sense. 
So, and I'm curious when you do find those people that are the right people, you know, within the media, it's not always just going to work out right off the bat, of course. Right. So how do you, could. it could, right. I mean, if you've got, if, if it's strong enough, right. And that value yeah. is very right. Um, it definitely can, but it doesn't always work out right away. And a lot of people want to date before they, you know, get serious. Right. Yes. And so how would you suggest people build and maintain strong relationships with the media? And why is that so important when in generating free publicity? Yeah. So social media is our amazing tool that we have. So find your journalists, connect with them where they are. If they're on LinkedIn, great. If they're not on LinkedIn, go to Twitter, great. Stay away from their personal Facebook page. That's personal. If they have a business page, great. Instagram, you have a little more leeway than, I really find Facebook personal pages to really be personal. Uh, but find out where they are with their media stuff, not their personal stuff, and start to build relationships. Share their work. They know when that happens. Give them a comment if they mi not miss something, but if they could, if there could be like a follow up story. Hey, great article. Did you know that X, Y, and Z? Maybe you connect them with somebody else, not even you. I had tremendous success on my local Fox station because I was on once. I built my relationship with that journalist by giving her other stories all the time. So when I had something, and actually somebody, she was on a later hour, someone on the morning show broke their foot and was in a boot. And she said, oh, you got to call Christina. She's great. Get her in here. She'll decorate and bring all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So they become your cheerleader when you provide them value. Uh, and if you don't think this is true, I met that particular journalist. I And I never stay up late, but I stayed up late one night and I was watching the news channel and she did a segment and I tweeted at her. 1130 at night. I was like, oh my God, I love that. If you guys remember Dollar Shave Club, she kind of launched it and it was that video. It was fantastic. She tweets me back and says, oh, if you have any product ideas for my segment, which was the next great thing, let me know. I was like, oh, a matter of fact, I do. Uh, but that started a relationship. I didn't get on right away. I kept pitching her ideas she didn't like until finally, get ready, April is National Healthy Foot Month. And I got my boots, my boot products um, for that. But that started an amazing relationship that we are now friends. We text one another. When she left the media after 20 years, I actually helped her name her new company. She even reminded me this the other day. She's like, you know, you gave me the name of my company. Uh, so you have no idea where relationships are going to go. Your local reporter could end up on CNN, MSNBC, Fox, Today Show, Good Morning America, whatever that is. That's why building the relationships are so important. Yeah. And so I I love that. And I'm curious, how how else are some of the ways that you approach building relationships with, you know, either journalists, producers, or other people in the media? Yeah. I, I mean, social media is the number one way to do it by sharing their work, talking about their work, giving them other people. Like literally yeah. you can email them and say, Hey, I saw this, you know, I, I have this great colleague. There's a whole nother angle to this story there. Uh, and if you think that doesn't work, the, the other angle, I have a client who's a pediatric dentist and I happened to be watching the news and they were, it was when the kids were going back to school and they all still had to wear masks. So I texted her. I said, is there anything about teeth and masks? And she goes, oh my God, there's mask mouth. And she literally emailed right after this segment to the medical uh, producer and said, hey, I just saw this about the kids going back to school. Do you know about mask mouth? Here are five things that we've got to tell these parents the kids have to do during the day because the water fountains were all shut off too. So otherwise, and the whole fear tactic thing, but it's true, is if they didn't do these things, they were all going to have a mouthful of cavities by Christmas. And she got on right away. And is now, because she did a great interview and prepared, is welcome back anytime. And that's how it works. You do a great job. Don't do a me, me, me. Don't sell. Give them good TV, good a good interview. They will have you back over and over again. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, and I love this, this comment from Misty. She said, share other people's value. That will definitely call attention to the fact you are a collaborator yeah. and not willing to only give 
or and willing to give, not just receive. And I think that's yeah, so I important. Love that, Misty. Yeah, yeah be a Misty's giver. so awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, definitely. You can't be wrong giving. You can't. You can't go wrong. Uh, my husband and I actually gave a presentation last night, and he talked about in his business, like if you're in business for the money, it's not going to happen. But if you're in the business to provide value and do good in the world, the money comes. It, it comes. Be a good person, and everything. People want to work with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and but it is important to receive as well, because so many times people will give, 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 but not be willing to accept things when others are willing to give to them too, right? That's kind of like right. the whole go giver um, methodology. Yes. I don't know if you read that, but I love that. Book. We talked about that last night too. The different, you've got the, was it the givers, the receivers and the connectors? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I think all are important roles that we all need to play at some point or another, right? Um, so I'm curious, what would you say are some important qualities or skills, uh, that people should have in order to be an effective connector as it applies to generating publicity? First thing is you've got to show up when they check you out. You have to check out when they check you out. So whether that's a client, a customer, a collaborator, or the media, is your website up to par? And I know everyone's heard the analogy, you know, our attention span is like a goldfish. It's less than seven seconds. I've heard it's three seconds. Yeah. So if they don't land on your website instantly and know who you are, what you do, and what pain you solve, they could go to somebody else. You need to spend the time to invest in your messaging and get that crystal clear because it might be all you have. Um, I spoke at this event last night. And I told everybody in the room, they're kind of up and coming emerging leaders, spend the time to get your LinkedIn profile done. I don't care if you post on LinkedIn or not, as a business owner, you should, but get that profile so it's rock solid because that might be the only place somebody lands. You know, it used to be when you put a name into Google, LinkedIn was the first thing that popped up. I don't know if they're losing their Google juice a little bit, uh, but your website and your LinkedIn should be just core on with your messaging and show you as that expert. They land on it. Wow, this is the person I need to talk to or see. And then make sure everything else below the fold and your links show your wow and that you're the person that they want to work with, they want to interview. And we have the capability to do that on our websites. And, and I told them last night, your LinkedIn is like a resume. You would never go into a business meeting a meeting, not a job interview, but a meeting handing them your resume. But LinkedIn is your resume. It's your online calling card. So spend the time to make that wow. So if people land on it, you're wow for them. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I like to, I like C's and I like to focus on free C's. It seems to happen all the time. So I always like to say, you know, with things like that, it's important to have a very clear, compelling and concise message that you know, on all of it. It can be hard to do though, right? I mean, sometimes there's so much going on. We get in our head thinking people need all the details, but that's kind of like your teaser, right? Or almost like a um, like a sizzle reel, like your LinkedIn page, which is funny because I saw um, Cindy's sizzle reel yesterday for the first time. Um, it's so interesting. I mean, you and I have known each other for a while now, and I have yet to have a face to face with Cindy, but we've been sending messages on LinkedIn and I think uh, she's coming that. Friday. I can't make it Friday, but I think she's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she, she did say she'll be there Friday and then, um, I'm actually meeting with her, I think on Thursday. So yeah. Good. Yeah. She's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, wait. Um, but what you're, you're saying with the concise, I'm actually working uh, with a friend who does amazing nonprofit work in my area. And she was looking for an MC for her event. So I reached out to somebody I know in the media. Uh, and I actually texted her because once you get to know them, you get their phone numbers and you get to text them things, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and so I, my, the, the journalist said, oh, connect us on email. And my friend, who I love dearly, sent an email like this. And I said, oh, my God. Um, and the journalist didn't get back to her, even though she was looking for the email. I'm sure she saw it in panic when she saw, you know, 10,000 words. 
So they and I re I texted again. I said, Hey, you know, my friend sent this. She's like, Oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. So they talked and and they want to do a whole story on it, but she's a different kind of reporter. So we've got to send a pitch in. And I literally before we went live send a message to my friend. I'm like, do not send this in until you send this to me first. Like it has to be short and sweet. This is a news guy. We're going to lose him. If you do this, we need to go boom, boom, boom. And that's it. Um, and that's so important. Media people are so busy. And I always tell people, think of your inbox. Are you going to read the email that's this long with a couple things? Or are you going to read this email? If you're me, I flag this email and I never get back to it. So, so honing in on your message, your elevator pitch, whatever you want to call it, is so important in your pitches, on your website, your newsletter, everything you do. And Cindy and I teach this. It's the hook, the art of the hook. You've got to be able to hook somebody in like that and tell them, boom, 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 why you, and you're done. That's how you get the yes. Right. Well, and a lot of the time, so I like to almost focus on like every next line needs to be just as good as that first line almost, you know? So people continue to feel like, oh, I need to read the next thing, the next thing, right? And you need to add some meat in there, but yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah, so important. It's a story. Yeah. It's gotta be a people, story. Right, and like you said, I mean, three seconds, it's literally three seconds and sometimes even less, especially with AI, the things that it's doing, I mean, it's so important that in that first three seconds, and I think that's kind of mostly on video, but with text, it's that first line, like the first five oh, to think seven. Think of Scroll words. Nation. We go on our phones like this. That's how we look at our phones. If you can't right. stop people instantly, you're done. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what are some ways that you would recommend like any good books or anything that, you know, you would point people to, to help them, kind of get better at that because it can be hard. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff in this book. Uh, you know, it's, uh, and I go to, go to my YouTube, go to my Instagram. Like, Oh, I put so much free content out there uh, that you just want to start and you want to start right with the, the three pillars. Like I talked about the being newsworthy, creating great hooks, finding the right journalist. You know, you want a short and sweet pitch. Uh, you need to follow up. Like it's just, there's just basic steps, but the key is the strategy. You want to build out your strategy for a year so that you are building relationships. You are in front of them so that if your first pitch doesn't work out, which we have a lot of people that it does, Sometimes it doesn't. It just doesn't fit in the puzzle right now. But you've got to have plan B and C and D. And then what do you do if plan A that they never picked up becomes relevant again six months later? You've got to know how to get that back up to them because you don't want to keep pitching the same thing over and over and over again. You've got to give them something new and different. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and where all can we find your book, the one you just pulled up? Oh. What would you say is the best place to find it? Amazon. Yeah, well, I got to free publicity. Free publicity. Amazon. And this is short and sweet. It's I practice what I preach. This is not a book that you have to read cover to cover. You could go right here, tip 102, looking good, and it tells you how to be camera ready. Um, you know, tip 80, send a special package, which you know talks about a follow-up, like thank you note, that kind of thing. So you can read this book quick. You can flip through it. Oh, that works for me. That doesn't work for me. This will be good. This isn't good. It's super easy to do. Just do yeah. it. Got it. Okay. I'm not going to put the link in the in the chat because it doesn't actually ever click. And I'm not going to put it on the screen because it's <laughs> like a thousand letters and things like that. But right. Um, but that is why. So we've created a, I think, is, is there a link on your website that people can find the book? Yeah, they can buy off the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think if you go... Christina Davis has a shop or you go to PR for anyone. They all they all link together. But yeah, you okay. can buy it directly from the website. Okay, got it. Yeah, and we have also set up, um, just for anybody who is watching, uh, we did set up a link that you can connect pretty directly with Christina, um, either scanning the QR code in the background or you can go to prforanyone.unicornuniverse.io and that'll send your information to Christina. She'll reach out and you know, ask her questions. She's, you know, a wealth of knowledge in this space. So definitely um, 
make that happen. And yeah, I, I'll be honest, I haven't read your book, but I am going to because it sounds very interesting um, and helpful. Lots of tips. And, it's just tips. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, and so, so what are some other ways that you'd say, you know, maybe small business owners or people just in general, how that they can leverage their networks to become better connectors and ultimately grow their business in ways that, you know, are related to PR. Right. And I used to go to a lot of networking events and I don't anymore. And I don't know how you all feel about it, but when you walk in and it's like, Hey, Daniel, I'm Christina. Here's my book. Why my book? Oh, you know, and I sell courses too. Oh, you can go on a trip with me. I do retreats. It's like, ah, stop. You know, and, and that's frustrating. So don't think of networking as selling. Uh, I love to meet people. I love to learn about people. Uh, and my husband actually taught me this a long time ago, and he's brilliant at it. You need to listen. Listen to what people are saying. Listen to how you can connect with people. Like, I'm a hockey mom. I went to Virginia Tech. Uh, you know, so many things. As a speaker, you know, different people that I know, you want to find that connection. Um, I mentor college students and give them interview tips. That's one of the things I do. I'm like, kind of stalk who you're going to inter interview, not too much, but see if there's something on their public profile that you can relate to. Oh my gosh, you like fly fishing? I love fly fishing. I go, I go to Ohio every year with my grandfather and we go fly fishing together. You know, because that instant connection, and I remember my daughter was interviewing, she just graduated from college and she called me after she'd had horrible interviews and she called me after one. She goes, Oh my God, mom, it was a conversation. Like they didn't ask me anything. I'm like, Oh, you got the job. She's like, no, 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 no. They didn't ask me any of the, you know, the hard questions. What did you do when you were, she's like, no, we were just talking about stuff I'd done and projects I worked on, whatever. I'm like, you got the job. Sure enough, she got the job. Uh, so, you know, people want to learn about you, but they also want to talk about themselves. So let people talk when you meet them, hear what you can hear to have that connection. Because once you have a connection with somebody, and we work with our clients on this, put the stuff you love on your profiles. If you're a marathon runner, if you love dogs, you love to travel, put that there because you're going to, like-minded people like to work with like-minded people. So, and yes, we can all serve everybody. I could serve, you know, no, I couldn't serve millions of people. There aren't enough. People always say, how do I work with my competitors? Because I can't work with everybody. Not everybody's going to like me. They might like Susan. They might like Lori. They, you know, it really depends. But being open to just having conversations and listening and connecting. And you might then refer them to somebody else too, because you see a better fit with someone. So getting the money part out of your networking and the getting the relationship into it. And that's for business and media um, that you're going to have the most success that way. I love that. Get the money out of your marketing and get the relationship into it. That's amazing. I write that, that down. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I, I am going to write that down. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great. A good one. Yeah. We like to say people, not projects at, unicorn universe it's very important thing that my business partner michael gray has always said and i just think it's so important uh it's funny i was talking about this just the other day but i went to a networking event one time and met this guy his name is jesse and he's like you know said hello shook hands and he's like please don't tell me anything about your business what's the most illegal thing you've ever done that you didn't get caught that's fantastic. That was hilarious. Yeah, I was like, that's so great. I didn't know anything about what he did until, you know, later when we connected on LinkedIn and I kind of poked around a bit, you know, but it was just of all the conversations there's that I had that day, there's one that I keep talking about, you know, and it's that one because it's just such a personal thing. And I was like, man, I got all sorts of stories I can tell you. <laughs> Um, One man. of my favorite people I met at a networking event, you know, they sent us a the booklet ahead of time. It was a weekend kind of retreat. And the person I bonded with the most and ended up becoming a really big client of mine, not having anything to do with work because he loves wine and he has a wine cellar and I love wine. So we, he taught me so much about wine that I didn't know because he's a sommelier and, uh, and ended up becoming a really big client. And not, there was no selling involved. He came to me afterwards because we had a bond and then he liked me and 
heard about things I'd done, not selling, but, but that really is how you do it. And you know, yeah. you haven't forgotten this guy. No. And, and we've had just so many personal conversations because I mean, you know, the thing that I always like to say is that businesses fail. Unfortunately, it's just the reality, right? But relationships are forever. And when you connect at a personal level and, and build relationships out of a place of people, not projects, right? Um, it's just a much stronger relationship and it's more fun. You know, you get to know people's quirks and their hobbies and yeah. things. Like, I love that. I'm um, a little goofy, but wait, let's go back, Daniel. What's the most illegal thing you ever did? You didn't get caught doing. No, <laughs> I'm the host is coming out in me now. <laughs> the most illegal thing I ever did and didn't get caught doing. I don't know about that. Okay. All right. So paint, that'll be for paintball. another show. I'm going to preface this with paintballs are actually made out of soap. Okay. But there might've been, it was long enough ago. There might've been a time that, I had a slingshot, and rather than toilet papering a house, paintball. Uh, I don't know about, I shouldn't have shared that. Anyway. I, I <laughs> might have toilet papered a house or two in my day. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, you show up with a hose, you spray it off, and hey, we just, it was a service. You're welcome. Right. You, there, you, you cleaned their house. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> yes. I shouldn't say I didn't get caught for that because I did. I didn't get in legal trouble. Big trouble. <laughs> Oh man, I shouldn't have told that. That seems like an edgy thing. That's okay. That's who I am. That's 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 the truth of it. I don't do stuff. Gotta like be that real. Anymore. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. So there's a question. Um, how important would you say it is to be authentic, be authentically yourself when you're in the media and you know generating PR for your business? Here I am, like. Uh, I can't believe I just shared that story, but you know, I try to be an open book. You, you a thousand trillion gazillion percent. How high can I go with that? Uh, I get invited back all the time. I'm as real as they come. I do a lot of lifestyle segments. Um, I have had watermelon that disintegrated on the set on live TV. The last time I was on, I was doing a wine segment and my aerator got stuck. And it was funny. My husband was watching it. And he saw it and kind of in slow motion. I didn't realize that I brought the case, the bottom with it too. So I poured the red wine, red wine everywhere. I laughed. We joked about it. I, you know, we moved on. They love that. If you panic or somebody asks you a question, you're like, oh, I can't answer that. I can't. You just say, you don't know. Oh, that's, I'm really not so sure about that. But let me tell you about this. Yeah. Getting comfortable in your own skin. They're just media. They're just journalists. They're just doing their job. But you have to be the real you. If you don't know an answer, don't make it up because that'll bite you in the butt worse than anything if you give a wrong answer. So just being true to yourself and authentic. People want to see the real you. They don't want a polished. Remember back in the day, the sales pages that people would do and they were perfect in the videos. You had to spend thousands of dollars and you don't have to do that anymore. People want to see real people, real authentic people. So just do you. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, the past couple of years have really changed a lot of that because, you know, people have their dogs in the background, kids crying, right. All these things that can happen at home where, you know, when you're at an office, you're a little bit more confined to, the office and all the professional right. things around, right? Um, would you agree that, that you know? Oh, I remember because I've always worked from home when it was not in vogue to work from home. And I would put a sign on my office door. My kids knew, like, if they were outside playing, the sign was on the door. You did not come in. Like, for fear of death, you did not come in. And now it's such a, who cares? You know, the, the funniest things during COVID were the, you know, baby coming behind the journalist, you know, in his office and, and right. And the dog barking and uh, it's, yeah. Thank goodness that that has changed a lot and has allowed us to be more human in business. Yeah. Well, and I love it. You know, when, when I see somebody's dog, it, it will change the whole conversation. We're talking about dogs, right? right? You right. can at any point ask me about my dog and we will then spend the next 10 minutes talking about dogs. So 
Yeah. Because you're going connecting. Down too much. <laughs> so you're connecting. You're a dog person. So yeah. that, I mean, when I work with people, tell people that. Make sure that's on your social media profiles. People are going to love, people who love dogs are going to love that you love dogs and they're going to want to work with you. Yeah. I don't think it says that I um, love dogs on my social media, but he's been on multiple live streams. He's there you not go. here today. I'm not going to get into that because I, I just, I don't want to right now. Um, oh. But yeah, but love that guy, my puppy Thor. Um, you have dogs too, right? No, we had um, a long time ago and I had um, travel athletes. So I did not think it was fair to put mm. a dog in a kennel every single weekend while we were traveling yeah. for sports. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. So I wanted to go back to this uh, comment that Misty put in the chat and actually kind of circle back to it uh, because you had said you can't serve a million people, but I think you totally can and you probably have. And you've got your book, right? And, you know, we talk about the, we talked about the go giver earlier, which says, that you know you're i think it's the law of compensation that your true worth is based on how many people you serve and how effectively you serve them shout out to bob Burke. um so and i love what misty said i'd love love to know your thoughts on this too she said the best way to serve one million people is to have a network of others like yourself all moving towards the purpose of one or towards one purpose or goal I love that. And I totally agree. I agree with you can touch a million people. I believe that. I know I have done that through the work that I've done with other people. I meant more, I can't personally have a million clients. Like yeah. I can't personally serve a million, even in a group coaching or do, I mean, you just can't give the value that people need from you. So having this network though, where you can refer business is amazing. And people, have thought for years that I'm nuts doing collaborations with my direct competitors. I'm like, well, she offers something I don't offer that my audience would probably love because I would have loved that when I started out. Now I could build the program and, you know, knock her off, whatever, or we can collaborate and continue to be friends and support one another and lift one another. And that's back to the having this big network and touching more people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you being so active in the PR world and media and all those things, I think that really just emphasizes the importance of being authentic and talking about things you know about, right? Because you don't want to give false information. Things change, right? But that's out there for like ever, you know, well, here we are right now doing a show. It's not going anywhere, right? I mean, that's going to be you know, it'll, it turns into all these different things. And so I think it's so important because we have such a lasting impact with like every word that we say. Right. Um, right. so I just, I, I totally agree. I think that's super important. Um, I'd love to know, you know, with your experience, I'm sure you've seen a lot of great things to do. What are some common mistakes that small business owners just business owners in general might make when trying to connect with people and get their message out into the world. Right. And, and I touched on this a little bit, but making it all about me, 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 me is not going to work. If you're, if you're pitching the media, if you're trying to work with somebody and it's all because of you, it's not going to work. It, it's not. It, and journalists are looking for stories that are beneficial to their audience that brings value to their audience because that brings the audience back. You know, you're doing a show, I'm getting ready to launch a podcast. I, in, in my mind, it's who, who can my guest be that'll be valuable to my audience, my particular audience, you have a particular audience. So it's really important that you get the me factor out of it and, and provide value. You will reap all the benefits, I promise. I, I have never been on a media outlet where they didn't say, how can people find you? It's just, it's just never going to happen. So you'll get all those benefits and you resonate more with people when you're not there selling on there, when you're just talking about what you know, you're talking about your expertise, you're sharing your love of whatever it is you do. And, and you're being interviewed 
not about some widget you don't know about. You're being interviewed about your expertise, whatever that may be. So it should be coming right off the top of your head anyway. So you're going to be an amazing guest or interviewee. You just have to get that sales piece out of it and the when you're sending it in. And then remember to keep it short and sweet. That's the other big mistake I see. And I can't tell you how many journalists have told me that. They said, oh, PR firms make it easy for me. They send me a press release like this, delete. You don't read it. Hmm. And I've heard that from multiple, multiple journalists. So that's yeah. the key is... How do you hone in on your message? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So I'm also curious, you mentioned a little bit ago about competing with others and that it can be much more beneficial to collaborate with people. Um, can you maybe share an example of a time where maybe you connected a couple people that resulted in a successful partnership or collaboration? I, oh my gosh. I, I always joke. I do this all the time. Like if I could make money connecting people, um, oh, you're going to make my brain spin now that I can't think off the top of my head. But I, I do this all the time. Well, the example I just gave of a friend of mine who, and I'm, I'm really proud of what she does in the nonprofit space. And she just did an event last week. She raised $325,000 for a charity. Um, she is a go-getter. And for me to get her for this next charity that she's doing, she's two big ones she's involved with, to get her in the media is huge. And to get her to have this journalist be the MC of the event. But I knew when I reached out to, to this particular journalist, she has a daughter, our daughter's age, and this particular nonprofit is preventing sexual abuse on college campuses. So I knew she would instantly resonate because she's a 24 year old daughter who just graduated from college. So. So that's the kind of thing is when you connect people, you want to make sure that the connection is good and, and it's a win-win for both parties. Right. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. <laughs> um, all right. So what about, let's see, what about some advice that you might give people? What would you say would be something to kind of look for when collaborating with somebody. So look at what they're doing and how can you fit into something they're not doing? What's the win-win? And that's mm -hmm. really, really important in influencer marketing, collaboration, anything. If they're doing ABCD and you do ABCD, that's tough. But if they're doing ABEF and you do CDGH, Wow, imagine if you were together. Cindy and I are the perfect example of that. When Cindy and I met, she was doing presentation training. She's amazing at that. She was doing messaging and branding too. I was doing PR, messaging and branding. We brought it together and I mean, we're really good together because you get the extra stuff that we do and then put us together on the messaging and brand part and it's unbelievable. Uh, but but we were basically competitors in that space. You know, people who needed more presentation work were going to her. People who needed more PR work were going to me. Now they come to us and they get everything. And that's how you can grow a really successful business. Not being afraid of, oh, well, if I share the money with them, it's not as much. No, we get to a much broader audience and can get much more. We can help so many more people because we've banded together. Yeah, absolutely. And you streamline things and create yes. more value for people because yes. they don't need to go looking around. They like you, they trust you, they know yep. you, right? And then they need other things that maybe you haven't been focused on for so long. And a lot of businesses will try going down those paths and say, oh, it's so similar to what I'm doing now. Why don't I just add this in? And then they end up spreading their expertise out yep. when they can collaborate with somebody, even a competitor. I, I've been saying this like all over the place that sometimes our best growth comes when we collaborate with our competition versus compete with them, right? I do it all the time. I had an old, old um, competitor and she used to do these amazing media lists. I, I didn't have the time, the bandwidth, any of that. I would refer people and then I get a referral commission on it. And I was actually her customer for many years because she had everything I needed for those types of clients right there. Why reinvent the wheel? 
right. when you can collaborate. Yeah, absolutely. Misty is just nailing it on the head. Yeah. I appreciate your yeah. involvement, Misty. Um, you know, and so it's funny, we we have this whole thing called Golden Connections, right? Sounds like Cindy was very much so a golden connection for you, where you guys leveraged each other's strengths, complemented each other's weaknesses, created a new opportunity, yeah. have added value to your clients. That's like checking all the golden connection boxes for me. Oh, we did. We checked every box. And the things, like I'm really good at design and graphics and she's really good at systems. So all the things that we were both missing in our business, we brought together and she'd be like, Oh my gosh, I've got to design a lead page. I'm like, Oh, I already did it. Like, I love doing that. I'm like, Oh, I didn't set up the back end. Oh, it's done. Like, it's just such an easy, just done. Like she knows, you know, we have our people do it, but we can say, okay, I need this. And it's done before the other one even stresses about that. They've got to do it. It's amazing. Yeah. No, I love that. That sounds like a very similar relationship that I have with my business partner, Michael Gray. Very system yeah. operations, stuff like that. And he's very creative design brand. I mean, he's creative. And it works great. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely. a perfect fit. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. So speaking of golden connections, I wanted to touch on who you said your golden connection was. Um, which you had mentioned, it's someone in media who sees the value of strong, bold, successful women that are 55 and above. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Why they're your golden connection? Yes. So my passion project, uh, which goes along with everything that I do, is I am over 55. Yes, that's true. Right. Um, but I feel great. And I, my girlfriends and I, like we we've worked hard. We're successful. We have fun. We have fun with our kids. Like we travel with our kids. Like we, it, it's just, and the, the media doesn't talk to us. The media stops advertising. It's like 18 to 49 year olds. And I read somewhere that women over 55 are like teenagers with money. Uh, so I want to have a place where we can talk and share things. And my podcast is launching early to mid May. Uh, I have lined up some amazing guests already. I've got some celebrity guests and I've got just everyday amazing people who have just crushed it post 50. Uh, and one of the guests that's coming on is actually a client of mine. And she works with women because so many women at 50, 51 have had a 30 year career and are retired. And they're they now they've got money, maybe a pension, retirement, but they don't want to stop working. They want to do so they're reinventing everything at this age, which was, you know, unheard of with our grandmothers. So I'm really excited about it and and connecting with these amazing women. And I really want to create a platform for us that's a place we can go and and collaborate and you know, share stories and share inspiration and share next chapters. That's awesome. What's the podcast called? Living Ageless and Bold for Successful Living. Women 55 Plus. Awesome. I love that. And it directly supports you said your dream is to become the real, not a celebrity, but the real spokesperson and positive role model for, for women. Real. Right. For real yeah. women that raised kids and worked and juggled and figured it out. And, you know, fortunately I stayed married. We just had our 27th wedding anniversary. It's not easy. Uh, I mentor a lot of young women and they're like, Oh my God, you've been married so long. I'm like, don't let anyone tell you it's easy. And you have kids, it's even harder. So um, I'm not a, you know, I, I don't give them the false picture of what life is, but we're here and you know, life is good now. And it's, it's fun for us to all be able to enjoy it. That's amazing. I love that. And congratulations. I know that we were <laughs> messaging each other around that time. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right. So let's see here. I would love to know, you know, what are, what are, what would you recommend people do? What would be the best way for people to connect with you? I know there are all these different places. What's the best way for you, for people? Yeah, I mean, you can reach out, chat with Christina.com. Learn more about me. Go to ChristinaDaves.com. See if you like what you see. 
Um, you can get the three steps for PR success, which we'll go deeper in what we talked about here and see if it resonates, see if you're ready for it. And if so, let's chat. Okay. I love that. And so anything that you want to kind of wrap up with as we get to the top of the hour here, uh, kind of specifically for connectors, you know, anything you'd like to share for people to really take away and think about? Just do it. Just, just do, do it. it. Just get do shit it. Done. it get, and you know, that's my motto. Get shit done. <laughs> uh, but it works. Just do it. If this is what you want, if you want to go from established to known, if you've got a business and you really want to go to that next level, you really want to be seen as the expert, just do it. It works. Yeah, I love that. And I love when you first told me that I was like, oh, this is so great. I was so excited to meet you. <laughs> I can't even tell you. So, I'm just, I'm honored that you have decided and, you know, chosen to come on the show with us. I think you've provided just tons of value and I'm confident other people will agree and seeing comments in the chat that support that. So um, awesome. anything coming up that you want to mention that you got the podcast, any events podcast that you want to mention? Okay. Uh, we're taking a small group to Paris, France, uh, May... May it ends June 1st, May 28th to June 1st, uh, socialmediamagicretreat.com. Uh, you can check it out there. Like I said, you'll have to talk to one of us. It's 10 people. That's it. But we're doing all of your social media for a year in five days, video, photos, and editing. And we're going to do templates and prep you. So you have everything. And it goes beyond two years because a lot of them will be templates that you can just put different things in. So that's going to be amazing. Awesome. Oh, there's Christine. I was just talking about her. I can't wait for her to be on the show talking <laughs> about the reinvention. That's it. That's exactly who I was talking about. That's awesome. So she's going to tell amazing stories about how you can kick off that next chapter of your life. That's so great. Yeah, I saw the comment over here. I'm like, oh, I can't miss that. Uh, she said, yeah. Christine Howard said that I have benefited immensely from Christina's and Cindy's collaboration. I have no doubt about that. Um, She's Christina, a favorite, favorite client. <laughs> awesome. Well, and you are just so great to work with. I'm so excited to have this solutions partnership with you. I'm excited to help a lot of different people get their message out there, talk about their story, help them grow their business. And um, I think that you are just a great person to do that. So let's see. Oh, here thank we go. you. So great getting to know you. This is awesome. And Misty has also said that this has been amazing. Aww. She knows it's going to be customized to her. Um, honestly, this was this is what Christina does, and you know her dream, all the things we talked about. I think you were just at the right place at the right time, Misty. And I think that's a huge part of being a connector and just bringing people together is just going with the flow, right? And just being there and showing up. So, yeah. Well, again, thank you so much, Christina. Um, I think that will wrap it up. So again, if you guys want to connect with Christina, visit her at christinadaves.com. And yeah, I really appreciate you being on the show. Appreciate everybody Good watching and have a great rest of your day. Thanks. If you're looking to generate revenue by being a connector or by getting referrals for your existing business, then check out how Unicorn Universe creates abundance through connections in our community by going to unicornconnector.com. That's unicornconnector.com. Stay tuned, follow us, and hit the subscribe button as we expand on ways to grow your network, generate income from opportunities we avail, interview our partners and connectors, and show you how to become the magical unicorn connector that you are.